and delighted to have with us this afternoon Scott Case, the CEO of Startup um, America, a new program which I'd like Scott to tell us about. Um, starting with, can you tell us what is the objective of the program, please? If I tell you that, I have to kill you. Oh, shit. Um, which, you know, <laughs> it depends on how your day's going, right? That could be a relief. Um, so St Startup America Partnership, our main objective is to help uh, maximize the chances of success for America's startups. Um, really, really focused on U.S. entrepreneurship. Uh, it was launched in partnership with the White House uh, about four months ago, January uh, 2011. Uh, there's two main parts to it. One is the public piece of it, which is policy-related and regulation-related, and I can talk a little bit about that. We, people have questions. Uh, but the main part that I lead is the private sector piece, uh, which is not funded by the government. It's not... Um, we're, we're a great partnership with them. We're completely independent, which means we get to do what we need to do to help America's entrepreneurs, and with a particular focus on startups. The reason that we're focused on startups is that all the net new jobs created in the United States in the last 30 years were created by companies less than five years old. So if you want to do something about jobs in America, you've got to focus on startups. And as I've been traveling around the country, and I'll talk a little bit more about mm. this, really been focused on how do we help everyone get the message that it's all about startups and it's all about the entrepreneurs uh, that lead them and uh, the, the people crazy enough to join the, mon the maniacal uh, founders uh, to accomplish things. So that's the basic frame of what Startup America Partnership is all about, or the private sector piece, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing. Okay, and, and how do you plan on achieving this objective? What, what, what moves are you making? What resources are you corralling to help you do this? So we, we launched with this brand, you know, this broad ambition, mm. uh, and the, the basic idea, we structured it around the entrepreneur and said, okay, what are, um, what are the types of things that every entrepreneur needs? And if Ed's paying attention, if you could bring up um, the main website, that'd be great. So what we said was, look, if you're an entrepreneur, how do we start to g get you access to some of the resources? One of the things I discovered in about the first six weeks of stumbling around the country was that there are all these resources out there to help entrepreneurs, and yet every entrepreneur I talked to said they couldn't find them, they didn't have access to them, they didn't understand how to get, how to get access to those resources. So we started to organize the world and said, let's, let's bucket it into basically four big uh, pieces. First, ideas. Frankly, anybody who's working on an idea, um, we want to be able to be helpful to them, but they're sort of out of our market segment. So we're not focused on folks that are, have got you know, a whiteboard and a, and a concept or a napkin. We're really focused on the next three categories, startups, ramp-ups, and speed-ups. Startups, at least a couple of people focused on building a product or a service and intending to bring it to the market and really create a company. That's different from uh, the, the engineer or the consultant uh, who may have lost their job and is now doing consulting or doing side projects. That's useful, but it's not really who we're talking about here. Ramp-ups, folks that are in that customer acquisition mode. They've got some revenue, they've got a product in market, and they're really trying to drive their customer acquisition. And finally, what we're calling speed-ups, companies where the, where the customer is actually driving the business at this point. So those are sort of the three main buckets. If you look at uh, new firm creation in the United States, roughly 500 to 600,000 new firms get created every year. 80% of them will never have an employee. So there's about 100,000 a year, and if you look at an under five-year category, our whole addressable market is about 500,000 companies. And we look at it in these buckets and sort of saying, that's who we're trying to help and really focus on. And Ed, if you go to the other tab, we said, okay, well, what does every entrepreneur need to be successful? And we, had, we bucketed things into five major resource categories. One is expertise. That's knowledge. That's advice. That's mentoring. That's accelerator programs, which we can talk more about. Services, what are the things that get in the way or are a distraction to an entrepreneur and are invisible if they've done them well? Think accounting, legal, um, office space, right? Third bucket, I think, is talent. Well, I can't read it from here. Um, is talent. Uh, focus on how do you get access to talent? How do we help entrepreneurs hire the right people and bring the right uh, talent into play? Uh, the last two categories, customers and capital. And I put capital last because it's the first thing a lot of entrepreneurs start with. It's actually, if they don't have the first four things right, it's kind of almost hopeless to get the capital side. And in fact, if you drive customer acquisition really smart, and if you're a student of Steve Blank's work around customer development, if you focus on the customer, maybe you don't need that much capital because you can actually prove that your business is driving it, and maybe that capital drives towards growth. 
So we, we bucketed the set of resources and we started to do two things. One was to organize the existing resources of the, uh, uh, that existed in the United States across a lot, a lot of these categories. And then we started to bring new partnerships together. One of our partners is Microsoft, we're here on the campus, and I see Daniel Lewin in the back. So, hi Daniel. Um, a focus on how do we bring large institutions that have resources that can help entrepreneurs. In the case of Microsoft, it's around their BizSpark platform. In the case of American Express, it's around their, um, basically their financial management of your, of your expense side of your equation. Uh, Intuit is a partner, Ernst & Young is a key partner, uh, Google is a partner, $100 million worth of AdWords to help entrepreneurs test out their products in a live marketplace uh, and use th that from a startup standpoint. So we've started to bring a whole set of resources in at a national level to help entrepreneurs be more successful. We're just at the very beginning of that process. We've announced about a half a billion dollars in resources, uh, at, you know, in-kind services and support. We're likely to announce at least that amount in the next uh, six to eight weeks, bringing a whole new round of partners into the table. And we're starting to connect the startup firms to these resources as we go. So our first order attack on this is focused on how do we bring national resources to any entrepreneur and how do we bring a single place where any entrepreneur can come into one place and start to at least see what are the resources that are available. The good news is we have a whole bunch of stuff in the works that is going to make the assessment and evaluation and recommendations of these resources much more robust and to do it in two ways. One is self-service, but the other is we're bringing a whole set of mentoring components to the table so that mentors and other partners can know what Startup America can bring to the table and help advise entrepreneurs and startups on how to draw down and access a lot of these resources. Now, I'm interested in, in, in digging a little bit further into that and then we'll get some questions from the audience as, as well, but there's Y Combinator and their clones, there seem to be a new clone every other week. So they're providing uh, finance and access to mentoring so for a period of time, primarily obviously in the consumer internet and mobile space. There's a thousand incubators in North America who attempt or say they can do something to help um, entrepreneurs. So what's different about what you're doing? Because all of them say they're doing pretty much the same thing. So, so what's different that Startup America's doing? Well, there's a couple of things. So first off, there's a big difference between incubators and accelerators, and I think it's important for us to distinguish between the two. A lot of the tradition of incubation is about you know, giving up equity to have some space, and maybe there's some services that go along with that. I think what's happened, led by uh, folks like Y Combinator and Techstars, is uh, an intensive program that partners with the entrepreneur through, whether it's 90 days or longer, uh, an intensive around really bringing them from where they are to a new place. And that education and training, that's very intense, it's very hands-on, and not particularly scalable. What we're trying to do is to organize all those types of resources in a place where entrepreneurs can see them, and we're doing partnerships. So for example, in the case of Techstars, they're building a platform right now that'll be available to all accelerators where they can do the intake of uh, entrepreneurs who want access to an accelerator program anywhere in the country, probably anywhere in the world, um, and be able to share that same process so that the best, new best mm -hmm. fit, basically, and that'll plug into what Startup America is bringing. So if you think of it as a, a one part, a big directory of the existing resources, and then another, which is to bring other massive resources in. You know, yes, Y Combinator could go to Google and say, can you give us AdWord access? Google doesn't have time to deal with the thousands incubators or accelerators, right. right? So part of it is that we're bringing a, a brand and a mechanism to place to organize all of those assets. The other part is is that even if you looked at, if you said a thousand incubators, right? You know, let's say they had 10 companies in each one. It's only 10,000 firms, right? The addressable market is 500,000 firms. So what about all, what about the other 490,000 firms that are out mm -hmm. there that all have the potential to tip and move into that space? So one of the things that we're doing at, at the partnership is we're taking this model and pushing it to the states. So last, um, uh, let's see, last month we launched Startup Illinois. So take this whole same model but focus it on the resources that are in Illinois. Bring the national resources in but also bring the ecosystem together in Illinois so that they can cultivate and curate the ecosystem for entrepreneurs and startups there. That's a partnership led by the entrepreneurs themselves and we're pushing on uh, we're, we're, we're pushing out regional launches in Tennessee, Michigan, uh, Colorado has expressed interest, Washington, Oregon, sort of all around the, the country focused on uh, entrepreneurship, Louisiana, an investment in the ecosystem itself. And so what Startup America has brought together is a way of organizing that ecosystem so that the entrepreneurs can participate and they really need to be the driver and then all the other pieces can surround it. Um, 
one question I have for the folks in the room, I know there's a mix of audience. How many of you are, at, are entrepreneurs, founders, or, or, or in the midst of starting a company at the moment? Okay, so just keep your hands up for a second. Everybody else in the room, our job is to help them be successful, <laughs> okay? It really is about them, and, and we get confused sometimes in, in, in the world to think that, you know, capital is at the center of the universe, or the customer may be at the center of the universe, uh, which might be a big company, for example. Um, what we really need to make sure that we're doing is making sure that we're supporting America's entrepreneurs and the founders and the starters that join them to maximize their success. And at the same time, we're bringing in serial entrepreneurs to lead those regional efforts who are the ones that want to invest in the ecosystem. Because the, the good news is, is that, that everyone in the, in the United States would like to have a, a city or a community that's like Silicon Valley. I've essentially gone around the country and told them that's a bad idea. Took 50 something years for Silicon Valley to get created. They've got to create their own community of entrepreneurship that's focused on mm. the resources and the assets of what they bring to the table. So, New Orleans or Nashville, as examples, they have their own resources and their own assets and their own history of entrepreneurship. And what we need to do is to try to encourage and take the best of what happens in a place like Silicon Valley and bring it into the, the conceptual frame, but actually have them grow their own start startup ecosystems yep. there and be successful about it. Uh, and it's, it's challenging because there's a lot of Eco, you know, a lot of um, economic development folks who think about um, entrepreneurship and, and they mix up small business with new business and they, they, they sort of don't get it and they somehow think that you know, there was an economic development planning session that said there shall be Sand Hill Road and there shall be VCs who will live on it and they will give money to people. That's not how it happened, right? There yeah. isn't even a Silicon Valley. If you're not from Silicon Valley, there's, like, there's no Silicon Valley. There's no sign like in Vegas that says, welcome to Vegas. There isn't a welcome to Silicon Valley, right? There's Palo Alto, there's Mountain View. We've got to get people to start thinking differently about it. So that's what we're driving down at that regional level. Okay. Any questions from the audience to, to, to Scott? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you explain We're just starting in that, in that piece. Can so I ask you to repeat the question? Yeah, yes, no problem. So the question was, what are we doing around talent? Um, we're just in the process of starting those pieces of it. So a part of what we've done is putting some educational materials together about how do you think about hiring, who are your first hires. We've started the process of building the pipeline of partners, both at the high end, think at the speed up level of the Spencer Stewarts and Hydrogen Stuggles and, and out here Egon Zenders of the world to help them bring in and help maybe even um, give your first C-level exec search at 50% you know, of the retainer or maybe no retainer to just help drive that, that process so that you understand how valuable retained search can be. So we're in the process of bringing those verticals. Right now it's a lot of information, and we're starting to bring the partners in. And then what we're doing on the local level, like in Illinois, is there's search firms that are starting to participate there and show that they can help. We have some, ta we have some access right now. Uh, Startup Hire is on there. Anybody familiar with Startup Hire? Put together by the uh, uh, National uh, Venture Capital Association. It's a great way. They've matched already about 15,000 physicians. You can list the resources that you need from a talent standpoint, it's really focused on people who want to join startups. And there was a gentleman in the room that I just met. Is he here? Uh, guy in the back there. So if anybody's trying to hire anybody, see him. You need to, he, he can help you. Max Shapiro of People Can, can Connect. Yeah, he has a, a, a unique way of connecting people. Uh, it'll teach you to have lunch with me. Yeah. Uh, cool. uh, other questions? Yes, the question over here, sir. So SBA and PTO files tracking. So the good news is that those are all government things. Um, so the first order piece of it is, is that I don't, I don't work for the federal government, so I may get these answers wrong. Um, so big asterisk and qualifier. Um, in the case of the SBA, we work pretty closely with them. They're rolling out a couple of new programs targeted at startups. They're moving at the pace that they need to move in order to check all the boxes off. Some of them have to do with um, new investment capital, and they've actually just started the process of matching that up. And if you're familiar with the way the SBIRs and other types of programs work, is they tend to match other investors with a SBA money. So in the process of driving those pieces along. And what we're beginning to do is to bring the government resources into play 
Right now, these are all private sector or nonprofit resources. We're starting to plug in government resources so that as an entrepreneur, if you're looking for capital or access to capital, here's the SBA program that might be most relevant to you. So that's the first part of that. that and I'm happy to talk to you afterwards about m more of the details. Um, the second is uh, on the PTO. That, that legislation on the Patent Office is moving through to help to actually make it available so that there is a fast track model until that passes and they're authorized. Um, the biggest challenge in the Patent Office, one of the biggest challenges is that it's a fee-based model. There's plenty of room up front here, guys. Come on down. Um, uh, the the, the fee-based model is important uh, because right now the, the Congress actually takes fee revenue out of the Patent Office and puts it in other programs. So one of the things that's changing is the ability to actually have the Patent Office keep that so they can invest in automation and other things that would make the process a lot faster. Because uh, fast-tracking a process that takes five years for everybody else means it's going to take seven years for everybody else, and for those who pay the fast-track, it's going to take shorter time. So there's a bunch of other things that they need to do besides that fast-track process. Okay. There's a question okay. over there. There's somebody had a question back here. I see a woman in, like, a greenish shirt, I think. Yeah. Great question. That's accelerated great question. benchmarking, yeah. Yeah, so accelerated benchmarking. So, so uh, anybody here know Brad Feld on oh, yeah. Boulder, yeah. Colorado? Yeah. So Brad and, and, uh, and I have been working on an assessment, a quick assessment tool that will allow an entrepreneur to actually make that decision, and we'll probably roll that out in the next few weeks to do just that. The challenge is a lot of accelerators have no track record. They've been around a year, two years. Maybe they've gone through two classes. The vast majority have done one class. You know, you're three or four years out before you're really going to see whether those companies that got that benefit actually there. You'll have some early successes around did they get capital or not, but that's not necessarily a good indicator of whether that, that, that business planning cycle helped or that business planning mechanism worked or not. Um, so we're starting to see some of that. So one is how do we help entrepreneurs evaluate those accelerators so they can at least know what questions to ask and what expectations to have. So that's more of a content piece. The other piece is that the Kauffman Foundation, which is one of the founding partners of Startup America, is uh, in the middle of doing an, uh, an evaluation program to do just that, to be able to look back sort of an academic way and get some real data about what are the success rates. But again, I think we're two or three years away from seeing anything meaningful come out of that. That said, I've been traveling around the country watching the pitches that are coming out of these accelerators, and they're unbelievable. I mean, they're really well done because they're getting a lot of the kinds of advice and mentoring in a very intense, almost crucible-like way that's pushing on them really hard. And you get a lot of that, I mean, shoot, you can walk down and go to a Starbucks here and you'll see that happening in the Valley. That's not happening in New Orleans, where I was a few weeks ago and saw Launchpad, Ignite's first class of young people, co young companies come through this. But boy, they got, they got beat up pretty strongly. So anecdotally, I, you, we can see a lot of change happening and a lot of improvements. But, uh, Other questions? Yeah. So the, the, we're a really, really big team. We have a very sophisticated process for that, which involves you emailing me um, at, <laughs> at scott at startupamericapartnership.org. Um, right now, we're focused on national partners that can deliver national resources on the order of hundreds of thousands of startups. So that's really our focus. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a big company. It just means you have to be willing to play at some level of scale. And you have to do something really meaningful for Startup America firms. So it's less about are you doing something you're already doing and more about what can you do to help us turbocharge things in this intense time right now. So it's really a focus on how do we get these on that order of hundreds of thousands to engage. We also have nonprofit partners, our affiliates that are doing whatever they're doing and we're listing those as general resources and then we have those local partnerships. But th that's the basic criteria for partnership. If I, if I can throw a question here as well. Um, you're doing a lot about entrepreneurs. What about the other side of the desk? What about particularly the angel capital? Are you doing anything with regard to um, stimulating um, angel investing or venture capital in regions outside of Silicon Valley where currently we're awash with it? 
Well, I suspect some of the people in the room that are pitching yeah, today yeah, might yeah, be yeah, thinking yeah, of Washington, Washington not the way they're doing the word, it. But, yeah. <laughs> um, look, there is a lot of there's there's capital uh, available. So one of the partnerships we have is with the Angel Capital Association, and their commitment is to double the number of angels in angel groups around the country with a specific emphasis outside of um, the the kind of traditional mm -hmm. uh, capital uh, innovation hubs like Austin and Boston and New York and Seattle and Silicon Valley. So that's one of the partnerships we have, which is focused on bringing more angel investors. The Angel Capital Association and angel groups drive about a billion dollars in investment a year. Mm. And if you think about it, I think their average investment is somewhere between twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars. So that's a lot of activity and investment yes. ca capacity. If they doubled that, that'd be huge. So that's one piece. The other partner that we have is the National Venture Capital Association, which is kind of way at, much further upstream. Uh, and one of the things we're focusing on there is to help. How, how many people are with VC firms here? VC guy? I know you don't want to admit it. Um, you don't want to be accosted in the hallway or the bathroom or something. Um, but the, the, one of the challenges that a lot of entrepreneurs have with the venture capital is, is that it's very, at, at, op at best, opaque as to what the VC firms are actually looking for. So one of the things we're working with the National Venture Capital Association to do is to have more venture capital firms get a little bit more clear about what are they interested in actually investing in? Not vague, you know, energy or clean energy or infotech, but really specifically, are there specific categories of things and, 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 and stages of business that you're most interested in? Because uh, there's nothing more frustrating than knocking on a lot of doors, but just them not being even the right door to walk through. Um, it's another thing to get no, which is really useful, but it's a whole other thing to be able to have some specificity. Okay. Questions again from the audience? No. Nope. Yes, like sir. How we're funded as an organization? No, the funding that is available. There. Ah, the capital, access to capital for entrepreneurs. So we're starting with essentially a basic matching capability. So a part of that is um, seed capital, angel capital, and we, we don't quite have the machinery built yet, but the angel capital association should be able to come in, you'll be able to see the angel groups that are available to you, the same on the national venture side. So start to be able to see access to who are the firms and the people that are around you. And then we have a bunch of folks who are working on some marketplace solutions. Um, that are out there to try to sort through how does a, a startup that is looking for capital of a certain type match it up and have access to it. So we're, we're just at the beginning of figuring out how to bridge those gaps to a certain degree. But right now, the first step is to make sure that entrepreneurs have some visibility on what's actually available to them right now uh, in those forms. The next area, and that's equity-based for the most part, there's a bunch of work, and this gets back to the question around the SBA, there's a bunch of work happening around how do you get access to credit and what, are those what does that mechanics look like, and how do you um, increase that? And if you think about credit, one of the challenges is, is that we've built, we've disassociated um, the trust about credit into sort of this data model, as opposed to actually the human beings who you need to develop the trust with around credit. So there's a lot of activity around how do we get back to a place where there's lending that's happening and debt financing that's happening that's less about your your credit score, where there's a lot of entrepreneurs who almost by definition have challenging credit because they're bootstrapping it to get to where they are. How do we deal with that credit model a little bit? And we're working with the Treasury Department on some of those things and putting some of those other programs, including the SBA program, in place. The time for one more question, if somebody's got a question they'd like to throw out. If not, let me ask you one then. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned, I think, quite, quite rightly, you don't want to try and recreate Silicon Valley in other areas because it's, it might not fit what they're doing. But Silicon Valley does have the highest concentration of entrepreneurs and venture capital in the world. So there's a lot going on here. What can Silicon Valley do to help you with the Startup America program? Well, there's a few things. So one is just continue to kick ass and take names. Um, you know, we <laughs> need successful startups uh, and we need to make sure that we're demonstrating that. Um, I think the subtopic of that is uh, there's a lot of uh, a need to diversify those that are particularly joining startups. The, the, the feedstock, if you will, for the next founder is often comes from the founding teams. And a big challenge is we're underrepresented in women. You know, I see a, a better set here, but could, you, could the women just raise your hand so I can get a quick visibility on it? Okay, th this is way higher percentage than what I see in a lot of other rooms around the country. I was in New Orleans. There were two, actually there were three women. One was serving lunch, one was from the SBA, and one was from the mayor's economic development office. Not one entrepreneur in the room were, were women. So an overweighting of, of focus on women and minorities. And then the biggest thing that we need to do is to drive the storytelling around that. 
the rest of the country needs to see that it's not just middle-aged white guys like me starting tech companies or starting clean tech companies or starting bio it, it, But that's the model. That's the mental model mm -hmm. to travel around the country. We need to drive that to see that there are amazingly successful women and minority entrepreneurs. We've got to profile them in the big way. So if you've got stories to tell, again, the same email address, Scott, at startupamericapartnership.org, send them our way because we need to sort of tell those stories and drive that from that standpoint. Terrific. Scott, we could talk a lot more. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time because we have... Sure, please. All right. Yeah. So, uh, good question. How do, how, do, how do you become a partner as a, as a nonprofit that serves entrepreneurs? Is sort of your question. So, it's the same answer as the capital P partners for, um, for corporate, but we do have a process on the website where you can, actually, uh, you can actually just say, here's the resources, here's what we do, here's the link to our website, and then we'll contact you and get you listed in the appropriate places within the website. And then for an organization like yours, as we get the, the admission process going with the, the ability for startups to apply and get access to our resources, we could reach out to your audience and, and invite them in. So you and I should just talk quickly after this. Does that work? So I have one more thing to share. Sure, can please. I do that? I know I see the clock ticking down. It's like, yep. you know, it's nerve-wracking. Um, I, I know there's nobody here who's going to have that happen to them for the next, you know, three hours. Um, one of the things that, that the entrepreneurs in the room that, that we need to drive towards that, that Silicon Valley does well, but we need to push across the rest of the country is investing in the network of people around you that care about what you're doing as much as you invest in your product development. So the more that, that we can sort of push that message and that construct around, it happens organically and naturally here in the Valley. It doesn't happen in the rest of the country. And so being responsive, as if you're being reached out by somebody who's starting a company in, in Louisiana who says, look, I'm, I need some help on something, to the degree that you can be that advisor or that mentor or that peer and help them develop the network of people who care about their success, the more successful we're going to be sort of overall as a country. And again, those people who held your hands up, I just want to thank you for being founders and driving entrepreneurship in America. You are what's going to drive job growth. There's a lot of talk, and jobs will be the four-letter word for the next 18 to 24 months. You're the ones who actually create the jobs. Almost nobody talking about jobs on the television are doing anything about creating jobs. They're mostly destroying jobs. You guys need to focus on driving that. So thank you for doing what you're doing, and we all need to help you do that. So thanks. Thank you.